Hi everyone, I'm Susan Mulvihill. If you are like me, this time of year you are picking produce from your gardens like crazy. And what a nice problem that is, right? But maybe this is the first year you've ever grown a vegetable garden and you're feeling a little mystified about when to pick certain types of veggies. Or perhaps you're a seasoned gardener but there's something new you're growing and you think, hmm, I wonder if that's ripe. So today's topic is all about picking veggies at the peak of perfection. When you pick pole beans and bush beans, you want them to be nice and tender, right? Well, that means harvesting them while they're still relatively small. The other day when I was picking beans, I accidentally missed this one, and they're sneaky that way. They hide in there. But you'll notice there are some bumps in here, and that is the seeds inside starting to develop. This bean is still edible, but it's probably not very tender, so not very pleasant to eat. Instead, I would recommend picking small beans that are nice and smooth. I love growing melons every year because you cannot beat the taste of a homegrown melon. They are so sweet and succulent and absolutely to die for. In this bed, I'm growing a type of honeydew melon called Arava. When I'm wondering if a melon is ripe, there's three things I look at. The vine attachment, the color, and the firmness. This is where the melon is attaching to the vine. And when it starts ripening, it will pull away from the vine all by itself. If you've ever bought a melon in the grocery store, more times than not, you're going to see a little nubbins of the vine on the end of the melon because, of course, they harvested it way before it was ripe. So when I see that it's pulling away from the vine, that's a very good sign. The other thing I look at is the color. And you'll notice there's kind of a yellowish one here and a greenish one. This one is nowhere near being ripe, but this one has started changing color, which is also a good sign. And then the last thing I do is I just kind of feel it. I don't want it to be mushy, obviously, but if I feel just a little bit of a give, which I don't feel yet, then that's also a good sign that it is ripe. Carrots can be harvested pretty much at any size you want. There's a nice one. The same pretty much applies to beets, although I would harvest them any time after they're about an inch in diameter. So this is one called Cylindra. You can see it's cylindrical. They're absolutely delicious, and it's going to be in my dinner tonight. You can harvest peppers at different times as well. When they are green, but close to full size, you can certainly harvest them, and they're going to be wonderful. If you wait until they turn color, however, they will tend to be sweeter and more flavorful. Now this applies really primarily to sweet peppers. For hot peppers, it's good to let them mature to their final color and they will be at their hottest. Now my potato plants are falling all over the place, but I did want to let you know that there are two main times when you can harvest them. The first is when they are blooming, like you see here, and that means you can sneak a few new potatoes carefully from under the plants. Those are absolutely delicious, especially with parsley and butter. The other time is to wait until the plants have been completely frosted in the fall. So that means when the plants are brown. And then you can harvest your potatoes and put them into some type of dark, cool storage. I could easily harvest any of these leeks right now, but I prefer to wait until the fall when they've had maybe a frost or two. Now here are some nice Japanese eggplants developing. And you know, in past years, I used to be mystified as to when to pick them. But actually, you are looking for a nice glossy skin. And also, this particular type of eggplant is supposed to be a nice dark purple. Well, it's a little bit on the pale side, especially near the end, and it's not quite glossy enough yet. 
The other thing I like to do is give it a little bit of a squeeze and if the skin and flesh spring back nicely then that is ripe. Well as you can see my corn patch is no more. This is the remains of it. But in a recent video I showed you what I do in order to determine if an ear of corn is ripe. So let's look at that real quick. Now this is a little tricky to show you, but here is a developing ear of corn. These are called the silks. Now if you want to know when they are ripe, one thing you can do is you can take a look at the silks and if they are absolutely dry as a bone, most likely the ear of corn is ready to be picked. But I don't stop there. The other thing I do is I feel at the end of the ear and if it feels quite thin and tapered then it most likely is not ripe. But if I feel it and it feels real rounded, then it probably is ripe. And there's one more thing you can do. You can carefully peel back the ends of the leaves and take a peek to see if the kernels look like they're fully developed. Now these onions are still growing, but the great thing about onions is that you can pick them at any time. You can harvest them when they're small as a green onion. You can wait until they're mid-sized and use them in cooking. Or you can wait for them to mature and dry them to store over the fall and winter months. Now how do you know when they're mature and have stopped growing? Well, the great thing about onions is that their stem flops over and that's all there is to it. At that point you pull them up out of the ground and you either turn off the water to the bed or put them in a sheltered area because you do not want them to get wet while they're drying. Wait until they are papery dry and then you can put them into storage. And I like to store them in a cool dark area. When it comes to growing summer squash, which includes patty pans, zucchinis, and crooknecks, the key is to harvest them when they're nice and young because they will be tender and at their most flavorful. In this case, I'm growing a variety called Claremore, which has a light skin. Don't let that throw you. I know a lot of zucchinis tend to have a dark green skin, but this is normal. So it is ripe, and this is really a wonderful size to harvest. Now this one got a little bit away from me, but it's still a nice size. It should be very tender and flavorful. If you let them grow to the enormous size, they will be filled with all sorts of seed and pulp and it just won't be as pleasant an eating experience as with the smaller ones. So what about winter squash and pumpkins? Well, this jungle you see here is my winter squash and pumpkin patch. You can see I have this cute little sugar pumpkin growing here and that's going to be wonderful for pie this fall. And I've got winter squash all over the place. So for knowing when they're mature, the same rule applies to both types. All you do is the thumbnail test where you try to press your thumbnail through the skin of the pumpkin or winter squash. If it easily goes through, that means that it is not mature. If you can't cut through with your thumbnail, that means it's ready to be picked. The other thing I look at is the stem color. It should be a nice golden color. And when I harvest them, I make sure that I leave a few inches of stem on the top. If you just cut them off or knock the stems off, that's a place where you can get rotting. And you certainly don't want that when you're storing them during the winter months. When it comes to tomatoes, really the taste test is the best way you can tell if they're ripe but certainly they should be the mature color that you're expecting. These are sun gold cherry tomatoes and they're a nice orange, so they should be perfect. Mm. I hope you found all of this helpful. Happy gardening.